We're at the clinic with Dr. Mike, and we're talking emergency care kit. Whether it's in your barn or your trailer, sometimes your horse can come up with some kind of injury. You need an emergency rescue kit, if you will. Dr. Mike, thanks for being here with us today. And uh, tell us a little bit about the essentials that we need to have in a toolbox or an emergency box or at the house, at the barn, or in the trailer. Well, Alan, you know, people are always emailing, asking about what do I really need when I'm going down the road or at the barn. And I think there's a few things we've got to have if we're going to be traveling. One of the most common things is we know our horse may get colicky at some point in time. It's going to happen to you, it's just a matter of when. And when that happens, that's when you need to have some type of medication. And you talk to your veterinarian and you worked out the dosage and everything, but Banamine. It's the most common thing we use to treat colic with. And that's what we only have in our emergency kit with us. And it's an injectable. Are there any other administrations other than injectable Banamine? You can use the injectable that comes in an oral form. It's a paste right here. You can see it comes as a paste. Now, the other thing is you, if you don't feel comfortable giving that shot, Take the Banamine injectable and you can shoot it in the mouth and it'll work just as well that way as it will giving it in the muscle. Absolutely. Now what are some of the other things that we would need? Well, one of the other things that's quite common is if you've got a stressful horse and you're going down the road and you're showing and we're trying to get from one barrel racing event to the other, one of the things, if you got a little sprained tendon or something, one of the newer things on the market, market is a thing called Equiox. And this is another non steroidal anti-inflammatory. It's just like Butte. But the big thing about this drug is it doesn't cause all the gastric upset that we seem to get with Butte sometimes with long-term use. It's really good in the horses. It doesn't give us any more pain alleviation than Butte does, but it does protect the guts of those horses. Butte is still a great drug, and we should have it in there. But if I've got a horse that I'm going to keep on some type of anti-inflammatory for a long time, the Equiox is a better drug. Absolutely. Now, what's in this little tube here? Well, that's your gastro guard. And again, if we got that show horse, and it, a lot of these horses are stressed out. They're just like we are. We're trying to go from one event to the other. You might want to think about putting that horse some, some type of medication. Gastro guard is the most common thing. Uh, ulcer guard is the one that tries to, you can give to prevent the ulcer from actually happening. And an interesting study looked at these Western Pleasure horses, because everybody always thinks about rail racing horses. 70% of those Western Pleasure horses had gastric ulcers. So even if you've got a Pleasure horse, you might want to think of putting on something like that to keep that horse healthy and going through the season. And that always helps. Uh, this one says SSD and then it has some college words underneath. I'm going to let you tell us about well, that. Well, this is silver sulfidine, which is an ointment that you use for burns. Now, how is my horse going to get burnt? That's what I was going to ask you. A number of ways. You go into these places and these wires are sticking out in these old stalls and stuff. You get a little spark, a little light to it, your horse might get a little burnt. Thing works great. Other ointments we got here, any type of antibiotic ointment, triple antibiotic, this is a nicofurosin ointment here, something you want to put on your horse to try to soothe it. And you can buy these little packages like you got there in your hand, Allen, and that is a triple antibiotic. It's got enough in there to go over most small cuts and, you know, scratches, and it'll work real good on the horse. Tear it open, use it, and throw it away, what you don't use. Now these single use units like this, would they be available at my local veterinarian? You can go to your local veterinarian, you can go to your local drugstore. CVS, uh, Rite Aid, any place like that would have something of that nature. Why would I want a thermometer in my emergency box? Well, you know, we had a segment on heat stroke. Yes, sir. And one of the things we want to make sure is we know the normal vital signs of that horse. And if that horse is getting too hot, we've got to be able to do something. And the most common thing we need, and I ask people all the time, what's the temperature of the horse? I don't know. Get a thermometer, carry it with you. Now, one more thing I want to ask you about, too, and a lot of folks will know is uh, stethoscope right here. How would we utilize this? Well, the most common thing you want to do with a stethoscope is when you put it in your ears and you start listening to that heart rate of those lungs, you may not know what's abnormal, but the thing to do is you start doing it, and the key is one day you're going to pick up something that you know doesn't sound like all those other horses I listened to, and that's when you know you found something abnormal. Consult your veterinarian. It's going to help you listen out. And also, we listen for our gut sounds, things like that. Listen for all those things that's going to help you keep your horse going down the highway. Can help us with all the health problems there. Now, with the advent of the new trailers, drop down doors, a lot of stuff flying in, tell us a little bit about the eye on it. Well, one of the things I see, and it always kind of makes me worry when I'm going down the road, I'll see horses going down there with their heads sticking out of the horse trailer, and I'm just waiting for a bug or grass or a stone to hit them in the eye. Triple, antibi triple antibiotic eye ointment is very easy on the eye, it's easy to apply, 
You can either put it on your finger or put it on the eyelid of the horse and put it in your horse's eye when you get into where you're going to try to protect them. You don't want to have that horse having a scratch on their eye and end up with an ulcer or something with the next day or two. I feel like a doctor now. They look like one too. You know the essentials and I'm sure you can think of something else that you would need in the emergency medical kit for your horse. That's after clinic. Now we're going in the irons with Lally Ward. Dressage is beauty in motion. Ladies on horses, men as well. And uh, it's got a deep, deep history. I'm with Lely Ward, Aiken, South Carolina, Paradise Farms. Lely, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for coming. Now, can you tell me a little bit of the history of dressage, where it comes from, and, and talk about some of the dress. I mean, it's almost formal. Oh, this is very, we're seeing a formal rider today in formal attire. Um, dressage is a French word that means training. And so these horses, the movements that you'll see, are similar to what movements horses would use in battle years and years ago. The horse needs to go forward and backwards. It needs to be able to stop quick, quickly and obediently. It needs to lengthen and shorten its stride to defend itself and to defend its rider in battle originally. You'll also see these types of movements used with bullfighters and things so the horses can protect themselves away from the horns of the bull. Now here we have an upper level rider in upper level top hat and tails attire and she also has a double bridle which is actually two bits in the horse's mouth. We're using this horse that has a lot of elevation to its step. It has a lot, you can see a lot of movement and swing. Um, it's going sideways now. This is called a half pass that she's doing and would be useful in dodging the swords and the lances and the bull's horns again. Now she's, it has evolved into an art form and a, comp, a competitive form that is now judged subjectively. And so the judges are act, actually looking for expression, submission, obedience, uh, there he just did a flying change where the front leg changed, the leading leg changed from the left lead to the right lead very obediently. So they have to be a little bit ambidextrous in their maneuvers as well. Oh, completely. Now the purpose of dressage, again, the training of the horses, we're going to show later on how this will apply to jumping. The horses have to listen to their riders, very discreet signals, which come through the leg, the seat, the back, the elevation of the rib cage. It's an awful lot to remember and learn at one time. So they're basically moving as one unit. The two minds together and all the limbs is moving as one unit. Absolutely. And the result is just a beautiful, elegant picture. Toy is sitting very nicely on this horse. Um, it's going in a beautiful rhythm, which is what one would later on want for jumping or any type of riding. It makes it look effortless, it feels great, it's very exciting, and it's also very difficult to do. Now, what are some of the breeds of horses that you look to, to compete in dressage? Well, this horse is a warm blood horse, um, and so there are two, basically, two types of dressage competition. There is what we call pure dressage, which uses a lot of warm blood horses, German horses, Dutch horses, Swedish horses, for example, there are many more than that. The eventing horses are going towards the warm blood horses, but eventing requires a lot of speed and galloping, so the thoroughbred is still my favorite. Oh, beautiful horses, and that's about dressage in the iron. Stay tuned to learn more about today's show.